Evening, everyone. Hope you all had a lovely weekend. I did. I went down to Glasgow. I was there at my daughter's looking after my grandson for the night. Well, for the two days, for the Saturday and the Sunday. So that was nice because I don't get one-on-one -on -one time with my grandson down in Glasgow very much. So that was nice. I think the last time I had one-on-one -on -one time, it was about, what, um, maybe two? Maybe two, I'm not sure. So it's a long time since I had one-on-one -on -one with him. I've seen him, don't get get me wrong, I've seen him, but I've not had one-on-one -on -one time with him. So, I hope you've all had a lovely weekend. All the kiddies go back to school up here in Scotland on Tuesday or Wednesday. And I've had a miserable weather, really, for those summer holidays here. Miserable. So, it's not been good. Can't really say we've had a summer. I think we've missed summer this year in Scotland. I think we had maybe one week where we had some lovely weather. One week. And then it just uh, decided to think, oh, feck that. Let's get back to our normal routine of rain and wind and thunderstorms last night down in Glasgow. So, that's the normal weather for Scotland. Oh. And to be honest with you, what's been going on in the UK is just mind-boggling but if anyone's interested in that i'll be doing a live i did have it planned for 3 p.m tomorrow but then i realized i won't be here because i've got to go and get my little fur babies so i won't be back till about what five ish four or five so i've set it for 6 p.m set it a bit earlier because there's always something coming out on in the uk at the moment So, tonight we're looking at Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers, who went missing, was reported missing on the 26th of February. The story goes, he went to bed at 9pm, his mum Katie went to bed at 12pm, well 12am, 12, 12 midnight and when she woke up at 6 a.m to go and, and she went into his bedroom he was gone never to be seen now people have always been saying why isn't this a criminal investigation i think it is i think it is but we'll look at some of the things that have been said, right? And just to make things that have been said and things we've heard that make me think it is a criminal investigation. If anyone's got any opinions on this, feel free to leave me a comment. Come and say hi. I don't bite. Anyway, they stopped the search after, I think it was seven or eight days. Right? Now, on the first day, when he was reported missing, he was classed as a runaway. Right? He just upped got out of his bed and went away, left the house. On the second day, he was classed as a missing child. 
by the Wednesday, things start changing. Right, because it's like what child? I don't care what whether you got whether you're perfectly healthy, young, glad, or whatever. You're not going to run away, right? If you made plans to run away, you're not going to run away and leave the money that you've been saving up in your bedroom. You're not going to leave that behind. You're not going to leave your wallet, which you have your money put into. You're not going to go without your shoes, without your jacket, without some water or juice or snacks. You're not going to do that if you're a runaway. You're not. You're going to make sure you've got all those things. But he didn't even take his phone. Now, how many cases have we heard of children going missing and they've not had the phones on them? Right? And how many cases have come back where the child's been killed or found dead, unalived? You know what I mean? It's a bit weird that all these children, when you look at the cases of these children that go missing, those without their phones, they've gone, they are found, eventually found, unalived. Now, he could have walked up, go up and walked out that house, but I don't think he walked out. If he went out of that house on his on his own free accord, it wasn't because he wanted to. Right? I think something happened. Now, I'm starting to think, did he even come home that Sunday night from the Texas Roadhouse? Did he return home from the Texas Roadhouse? Because the police aren't saying whether they've got any video footage of him. And I've always said, once the police go, shh, and zip up, this is when the conspiracy theories start coming out. And we can't, we can't do that. Because it will drive you crazy. It will drive you crazy if you can't listen to all these conspiracy theories and everything. It would. Right. And we will be looking at one of these theories later on. Which I've only just heard about today. Because like I said, I've been down Glasgow so I haven't been on my laptop much because I've been with my grandson and he's been on my laptop and he was watching TikToks on my laptop so I don't know what are your views I I keep going back and forth now on this case I really do, because every time I think, you know, something happened in that house, I'm thinking, but did it happen in the house? Because there's no sign of him anywhere, right? And the only last sighting of him was when he left the Texas Roadhouse. That's the last visual sighting of Sebastian was when he left the Texas Roadhouse. Yeah. It's about what nine, ten minutes away by the car. I don't know. And what I find strange as well is Katie eventually, after all these little interviews she'd been doing, she kept adding to her story, right? Like, he went to bed at 9 o'clock, he come to her and said, Good night, Mum, good night, puppies, love you, Mum, love you, puppies. And off to bed, he goes like a good teenage boy does. Yep, right. If you believe that, you believe anything, wouldn't you? So, I've never met a teenage boy go, 
Okay, so, okay, Mum. No, no, I love you. Go to bed at nine o'clock. <laughs> Right? I had the ruling in my house that the kids would be upstairs by what? In the summer, in the summer holidays, it was like, they had to, they could, they stayed out later, but they had to be in the back garden. Come 7, 7, 7.30, they had to be in the back garden. They could have their friends in the back garden, but they had to be in the back garden where I could see them. Occasionally they would be out the front, but that would be because I'd be out the front doing something in the front garden. So I was watching them. Yep, they was like 10, 12, and I was watching them still. Oh, yeah. So, then about 9 o'clock, they'd come in. I'd say, right, come to come in. And then I'd go, are your friends stopping the night, Simon? And they'd go... You know, right, off you go then, off you go home now. I'll give your mum a phone call to tell her you're on, you're on your way home. Nine times out of ten, they'd be stopping the nods. So I'd be giving his mama, their mum a phone call saying, is it all right if your son stops at ours tonight? Yeah, no problem. Right. But those in by nine, and those up in their rooms by, what? Quarter past nine. Nine, quarter past nine. On a weekday when I was at school, they was in by 7.38. And after they bathed and everything, they'd be, well, no, they was up in their bedroom by 7.30, so they'd be in about 6.30, so they could get the bath and everything, and they'd be up in the room by 7.38. Whether they were asleep, that's it, any other discussion. <laughs> Normally they'd be watching their TVs in the bedroom. So I've never yet come across a 15-year-old go to bed like she makes out he went to bed. That's a, that's a big red flag in my eyes. And then she's on the phone to her husband, CP. From about half nine. She then goes, at ten o'clock, she heard some noise coming from his bedroom. Right? And she said, she shouted through, I don't know what you're doing in there, but you got you better be getting to sleep. And then people was questioning, Why didn't you go did you not go and check on it? Your son's autistic. He's got a uh, fluid on the brain or something, and if he banged his head, he could have killed him. Could kill him. Right? That's why he can't play, don't play f football. And I suppose he doesn't ride a bicycle for that reason. And things like that. Anyway, she said, Oh no, because he's 15, I don't feel I need to go and check on him at 15. I'll tell you this much, if I had a thump or a thud come from my son's room, be it f being 15 or 16 or whatever age, I'd be right up them stairs. I always knock. I even do now with my grandson. I knock on their doors before I go in. He knows it's me because I'm the only one that will knock. Right? And so I always knock. On the door before going in and then when I go in I said what are you doing in here what was that thought what did you drop on the floor what did you bump on the floor with you know what I mean and I said oh it's just my school book or it's just this that fell off the cupboard mum okay fine but I was there checking So that makes no sense to me, to not go and check. But then, because people wasn't believing her story, so this is what I think. I think, oh, God, people are questioning me now about that thought. 
I they don't believe me. But perhaps if I tell them this, they'll believe me. So then she comes out and she says, I called through to him. I said, was that you, Bubba, falling out of bed? No, Mum. Okay, whatever you're doing, just go to sleep then. So she's making out that she spoke to him on the Sunday night to make out there's proof of life. That means nothing that he spoke to you. It means absolutely nothing. We've only got her word. And I say we've only got her word because whenever Chris is questioned about that thud, because don't forget, he was on the phone to her at, at 10 o'clock. She was on the phone to Chris at 10 o'clock. So she will give, he will give her a call through to him. Everything. But when you ask him a question about him, he won't answer. He won't answer that. Why? Why won't he answer a simple question? Was such as, what are you? What do you know about the thud that came from his bedroom? And simple question, but he won't answer it. And I'm thinking, why? Why won't you answer that question? You was on the phone to Katie, so you must, you must have heard a shout through. Whatever you're doing, you better get get to sleep. So why won't he answer that question? And I remember the PI saying, well, Katie spoke about this. Well, that's up to Katie, he'll go. If Katie wants to talk about that more, then that's Katie's choice. He will not talk about that. Even though, even though he has said he cannot answer anything about what happened on the Sunday night before he phoned? Right? Because he wasn't there. So up until 9.30, he can't answer nothing. He don't know what happened, what went on. Right? He knows they went to BJ's and then they went bowling because he said, this is his word, he was looking, lucky to be to get to go bowling. What did he mean by that? He was lucky to get to go bowling. Had he been playing up or something? Being a bit lippy? Because I wouldn't say that. I'd say he went bowling. He had a great time. I wouldn't be saying he was lucky to go bowling. And if you go over that interview, that live he did, well, all the lives he's done from Smiley's, Smiley's Mills, the Duchess, and the Web Sloops. Go over all those interviews. I've got them all scrum typed out. Got every, all those interviews typed out. I've got a couple I've just got to finish off. Right? And things like that. And it makes me wonder why. Hold on. You don't need to see this. You need to see this lad. Yeah. It makes me wonder why he won't talk about that. Even though he said he can answer any questions... From 9.30 onwards, because he was on the phone with Katie till 12. Right? And he can answer questions from 6, like 10 past 6, 5 past 6 onwards in the morning. Because that's where she phoned him. But he won't answer anything about that thud. Now, that makes me wonder, did the thud happen? Was there a thud? Because why won't he talk about it? 
Well, when you just turn around and say, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was talking to Katie and she heard us all come from his bedroom. And she just shouted through to him, I'm going, what are you doing? But you better go to sleep. Why can you not just say that? But it doesn't. Right? So, is, oh, I've been typing out these transcripts on them lives, and I swear to God, his voice gets to me sometimes, but it's also getting to me to think, is he covering for Katie? Because the question was brought up about Katie knowing more. And he said, what do you think Katie knows that she hasn't already said? He's very protective over Katie. Why is that? I know it's his wife and it's nice to have a husband who's protective over you. If you ever had one, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't, so not when it comes to his mum and dad, put that man. Anyway, so um so he's very protective over, but why? And why won't Katie talk no more? Why won't she answer these questions? She was the last one with him. She's the last one who apparently spoke with him. Well, she did, was the last one, because even if he didn't get back to the house, she was at the restaurant with him talking to him. So she was the last one to be with him. And yet, they're trying to ask him questions about how perhaps Sebastian was feeling. Was he overwhelmed? by everything that had gone on that day, overstimulated, I think he was, an autistic lad, right? Yeah. I've got two grandsons, one's on the spectrum, one were waiting to get a diagnosis, right? And they are both the same in one thing, well, several things, they correlate and the same and that is if they don't want to go out they won't go out they will not go out if they've got to get dressed to go out they will not want to go out like today my daughter wanted want was on about taking a, my grandson to get his hair cut ready for Wednesday. He didn't want his hair cut today because he didn't want to get dressed to go out. That was the reason. I have to bro like if I try to get my medication before I pick my grandson up on a Friday. But sometimes it don't come through till like five, six PM on the night time. So I have to go out on the Saturday and get it. I literally have to bribe my grandson with a toy or something just so we can go to the chemist to get my prescription <coughs> because once he's not once he's undressed which is within about five minutes of him walking in my house he don't want to go out again He's quite happy staying in. He's quite happy staying in, watching TV, watching, playing on his tablet or playing with his bricks or whatever. And that's the same as my grandson down in Glasgow. So, and like yesterday morning he wasn't dressed and I said, you're getting dressed today? He went, why? I said, just a question. You don't have to if you don't want to. I said, but it's lovely out there today. Yesterday it was all rain and gloom. You know what I mean? So it couldn't really go out anywhere. It only got nice about what, five o'clock on the night. So we managed to go take the dog for a walk. 
and I said because it's nice today you could go out in the back garden on your place on your swing and whatever your climbing frame with that he's gone upstairs got himself some pyjama bottoms on and a t-shirt to go out the back because he knew he had to get something on because he's not not to go outside with no clothes on all right but so for a 15 year old to do all those activities in one day and don't forget right he probably didn't want to go to BJ's because after BJ's they came home she put the groceries away and then they went to bowling and then they went for dinner right so did something happen earlier on in the day where he didn't want to go out again and that's probably why Chris said he was lucky to get to go bowling. I don't know. However, I've just been watching a YouTuber on my TV and he's been searching a whole, an old house across the road from Yogi Bear. The caravan park where they've been ca caravanning, where they've had their five wheeler. Right? So they've been over uh, searching this house because there's a discrepancy in the time of when Chris went back to collect his five wheeler from Mississippi to bring it back to Tennessee. Now we all know it takes three hours, 30 some minutes. Right? But just say three hours, 30 minutes. So there's seven hours there and back. Why did it take him 17? It don't take long to secure a, a trailer up. It doesn't. You just put your kettles away, like some people even put kettles in the sink to stop them falling off and things like that. Make sure your cupboards are secure. Yeah? It doesn't take long to do all that. So why did he take and expend an extra 10 hours? Well, no, it was, yeah, all in all, it's around about 10 hours he spent down there. Doing what? Your, your stepson has gone missing. But your main priority was, because I can understand him going to collect his five-wheeler because it was coming to the end of the month and he'd have to pay again for another month's fee if he left it any longer. So he went down around about the Thursday or Thursday or something like that. It couldn't have been Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday because Seth was there those three days at the house. And he said, Chris never left the house then. So it had to be the Thursday onwards, which would be 26, 27, 28. It'd be coming up to the end of the month. So I'd say February, wasn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, 26, 27. Yeah. I'd say it was a Thursday he'd go and pick up his trailer otherwise he'd have to pay for him every month but he had 10 hours spare now I've never asked, heard anyone on any of these lives that he'd been on about those 10 hours what did you do in the 10 hours? Yeah, okay, perhaps you drove down there and you want to chill out for a bit. Chill out for a couple of hours before driving back. Two hours, right? Pack everything, make sure everything locked up and everything. 
have a drink, I don't know what, coffee, tea, cola, you name me, whatever, and then drive home. Why go down and stay the night? Right? Now, let's just go into Google Maps, shall we? And let's go. Type in Yogi Bear Memphis, is he? Or Mississippi? Is it Yogi Bear Memphis or Yogi? Yogi Bear Graveyard, no. <laughs> Uh, Yoga Bear, Memphis, so, you know, Municipi. There's two. I'll click on. <coughs> 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 Now let's just present this on the screen. Oh well. Take this off. Sorry Sebastian, gotta take you off the screen a bit. Right, there's this place here. Now could that be the place or Jellystone Park Camp Resort, Memphis, Tennessee. Possible because there's that road there. Let's have a look at the other one. Uh, Memphis, Tennessee. Right, uh, let's have a look at this one. I think they're both the same, it's just two different things. Okay. Okay. Let's go there. I'll oh, know by the entrance if it's this one or not. Huh. No, I won't. <laughs> no, I won't, no. Oh, I might do. Yes, this is the one. Because they was parking their trailer right there. Now, this image was captured June 2022. Right, so this is two years ago. But that's where they was parking their caravan, round there, their five wheeler, round there. So, and if, I'm sorry, but why would you park your trailer so close to an entrance? Why? When you know, you know, and if you don't know, then you've got to be as thick as two planks. You know people are going, someone's going to track you down, right? They'll track you down. They'll track you down to the end of the world, the real wood. So why would you park your trailer? I'd have been park, same parking mine over here. I'll go and see if I can get. Yeah. Right. I've been parking mine over here, somewhere over the back. You know what I mean? I know mean, why would I be doing it there? But apparently, I'm, some old houses 
Right, I'm going with these are on. This is like two years ago now. So I don't know. But apparently there's an old house across the road. Be helpful if we had a more up to date picture. On the live I was watching, the video I was watching, it said you could see the caravan park from this house. So it's got to be, but these look fairly new, so I can't see them being old and decrepit and falling apart. So it just doesn't matter. I don't know where this old house is, apparently. I'm going here to see. Is it there? Hmm. Is exit entrance. No, I'm going too far up now. <coughs> Hold on, let's see if we can get round there. Because it said the old house is... No, it's not going to take us there, is he? I can't see them being... Um, like... In the state of ill repair where they're falling apart. This was only two years ago. So unless they had some really bad weather come through and ripped the houses to bits and whatever. I can't see them being... Like that. You know what I mean? Because these look fairly new. You look at these, they look fairly new. So, you know. So, I don't know. Anyway, I'll put the link to that video in the description because it's interesting to watch, put it that way. And in my opinion, it is somewhere you would leave, dump, whatever, a body. Now, someone said, I said it, I said... Could, could they put Sebastian somewhere near Yogi Bear? Because why would Katie go down there? Could they be keeping him in a house somewhere? And like while they're down there so that they can keep going and putting, giving him the food and what? But if that's the case, wouldn't he need his medication? Right? And nothing's come up on his medication about it being renewed or anything. So, but that's a big sticky point. That medication. That's why I don't think I, I like to think because this is going to be leading into what I'm going to go and talk about in a minute. I'd like to think he's still alive. But I just don't know. I really don't know because I, but that is definitely the campsite because they used to park their trailer there. I'm not even saying that's their trailer. I'm not. But that is where they used to park their trailer because you used to see the cars out here. So they would literally reverse it into there. 
because his car was parked here and her car was parked like there. Or her car was there and his car was there. One of the two. And then, in that inter live on the web sleuths, Hi, Robin. Sebastian probably don't know the name of his mates. He probably doesn't know. He probably doesn't. But what gets me is, if he's still alive, would he not, would they not still be wanting or needing his medication? It's not life-threatening that he doesn't take it. Right? But it's not going to be in a good way. He's going to be so confused and agitated and... It pro it, in my opinion, he'd probably uh, go right back to how he was when he was a very young child. You know what I mean? Because of his confusion and not understand why he's where he is and why he can't go home. So, but I also understand, someone said, across the road is storage units. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to see if I can get down on there. Yeah. Let's just see if the storage units down here. Because someone said there were storage units around here. There's a U-Haul stuck place. Right. And I know Chris had. The lady Donna hasn't said anymore. No. No, she hasn't. I might get in touch with her and see if she'll do another read, another thing on him. You know what I mean? Because Reverend Donna Serafina, is that who you're wrong about? Um, but she, she's normally on point. But as I, as she said herself, when she comes, hi Georgia. When she does see these visions, right? It's like bits it some here and a bit there and a bit there. It doesn't come in order. It does not come in an order. And what what she points out could be anywhere in the USA. Anywhere. Anywhere in the world. Yes, that's what we're going to talk about, Robin. I only heard about that today. As I said, I've been down in Glasgow. I got back about, what? Oh, because I missed my first bus. Luckily, I got on another bus which was leaving about half an hour later. So I got in about, oh, blah, 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 about half three. Got home about four ish. So I'm really tired. But um, I've just been watching it uh, another Give me a damn break, she's a freaking lunatic. <laughs> Oh, God. Yes, it's on JL. Oh, and that's the one we'll be looking at. Because I thought, hmm. I was talking about Sebastian tonight. I thought, hmm. Because I normally do a quick check to see if there's any new updates on Sebastian. 
She's a scammer. Hmm, I don't know because she was true with the, the girl and the lad whose parents, just, whose mother's just been sent down for life and he's just had the death sentence. Um, Tyler. Right? Because she said before they even found the children, six months before, how, where they would be found, in what position, not exactly what spot, but how they would be found, what they'd be wearing, and things, and certain other things, like what happened, what the body would be like. That's it. She fluked that. She's fraud. You know, CP's trailer's not there no more. I don't know where it is, Robin. But we haven't heard nothing from her anyway, so... But a lot of people have gone quiet on this case. A lot of people. And it's because there's no information coming out. And like I said, is this a criminal investigation? I think it is. Because the PI said, when the PI first started doing an interview, she said she requested information on Sebastian from law enforcement or whoever. And they turned around and said they couldn't give it her because it was a criminal investigation. And then all of a sudden, it was like, no, 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 she spoke at a term, it isn't a criminal investigation. They did some backtracking, right? But please, if you're from America, yeah, from the USA, how many cases have you ever heard of a DA being involved in a missing child's case? Yes, that's the one I was talking about as well, Robin. I've been watching that. Silver. Silver on the scene. Yeah, and then the police turn up, don't they? Wow, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if they caught, if he got collared by him or if he managed to get out because his wife was phoning. Someone was phoning him, telling him the police were coming. So I think he got out. But apparently, he said it's in one of these, it's in an old house. Right. Opposite. And they said, from the old house, from this wreck of a house. Right. And these are the only houses I know here. And this was took in 20 uh, imagery. Oh, no, this is 2024. Imagery. You know what I mean? And the garden is all overgrown. So I don't think the gates, data, map data he was right on this. Right? But it said it was uh, across the road from the Yogi Bear Caravan Park. Which is an ideal place if you watch that video, and I'll put the link in the bottom in my description, to hide a body. It really is. Because I go back to those 10 hours he had. He spent 17 hours away from his home. Three, hour, three and a half hours travelling down, three and a half hours travelling back. He had 10 hours. Give him, okay, give him an extra hour back because he's, he was driving a five-wheeler. Pulling a five-wheeler. So we're giving him an extra hour drive home. So there's nine hours. He had nine hours down there. What was he doing in those nine hours? Hmm. So, and that is a big red flag to me. And the fact that Katie, 
who is the number one person people want to talk to? He won't let her talk. He will not let her talk. He's not going to put her through all this intimidation and these nasty, vile people coming out of these nasty, vile comments. She's a big woman. Tell her to pull, pull her big girl panties on. And grow up. You don't need to be watching the comments anyway when you're doing a live. You're there to tell us about your son. Right? But he knows she's the one who will sleep up. He knows this. She's the one who's going to sleep up on these interviews. If you ask her these questions, she's going to sleep up, especially if he isn't there with her. Now, she could say, oh, he's not here with me. No, he's not here. How do we know he's not there with her? Because she doesn't come on video. She comes on with um, just a blank picture, really, nothing there. Just her, her voice. But she doesn't even do that. She's gone quiet. The last interview she did was for some TV station or program, and it was like four minutes long. And I've got another in, uh, live I'm doing on Sebastian about Chris and about Katie and about the PI, Chloe, right? How, remember when he went berserk on Chloe? To Heather, he was on the phone to Heather and he was going berserk, calling it this and that and whatever. Well, I can prove who was in the wrong. It wasn't Chloe. I've got it written down. I've typed every word of that interview he did on Web Sleuths out. Every fucking word of it. And he was the one who mentioned, he said, when she said, I was giving information, he said, he then turned around and said, does that information uh, come, is it about me, Seth or Katie? Now, really, she should have said, I don't want to say. Right, but you know what Chris is like. He's going to say, no, I want you to tell me. All right, so she, anyway, she said, Katie. He then come back a minute or so later and said, is that, information about Katie when she was younger. No, he said it, not her. He said it. So this is what I'm going to do a live on next time is about that because I think he's out of order. Anyway, not on about that tonight. So it's got to be one of these houses, but I don't know. It's got to be. These are the only houses. Obviously. And I know this photo is years old. Right? But these are the only houses opposite the caravan park. So, it just doesn't make sense to me. But, yeah, anyway, so I am going to pull up that interview. I don't, I, I don't know what to make of this, right? So I'll pull it up, hold on. Downloads. I always download them now onto my YouTube. Come on. My internet's going slow tonight. Uh, right. Oh, it is. I don't know what's got my internet to do my head in. 
Oh. But, um... Yeah, but I was watching that tonight, and I must admit, I wouldn't want to be wandering around that house. Ugh. I sat there watching that, and I was, I was literally scratching my arm, and I was, ugh. No, no. I don't know why this, my internet, it's not saying anything. My internet is, let's have a look. My internet is fine. Yep, my internet's fine, so I don't know what this is going on. Let's try it again. Let's come out and try it again. Oh, I've all nights for my internet to play up. I have been away all weekend, so my internet's had a break. Every day I'm on my internet, you know what I mean? It's had a break for, f like, for nearly four days. Ah. Right. Now, this is credit to... Jay Allah. Right. Oh, I'm just going to credit him. <coughs> <coughs> credit. <coughs> okay. I'm going to. Right, so this, as I said, this is credit to JLR, and I was a bit, hmm, I don't know, should we believe this, should be not, I think it needs to be checked out, you know what I mean, but everyone, you make your own opinions upon this, so I'm going to play this now, I'll play it all the way, I'll just speed it up just a little bit, okay, and work off. Oh, hello, hello, JLR Investigates, come on in everyone. Uh, this witness right here, ladies and gentlemen, her name is Donna Fowler, and she's making some very wild and bold claims out on Facebook. She's claiming Sebastian Rogers is alive. She's seen Sebastian Rogers. She knows where Sebastian Rogers is. She contacted uh, Tony Mathis and Seth Rogers to let them know that she doesn't trust law enforcement. And she's concerned that Sebastian is going to be moved to a different location. Uh, come on in. I don't know what to believe, but I'm going to put the information. In well, I'm sorry, but by putting this out there, love, by going on Facebook and putting it out there, he's going to be moved now, isn't he? You know what I mean? What is it with people? Why are you getting touch with Seth? Seth has got to let the police know. He can't just go off willy-nilly and go, oh, okay, I'll go and check that out. He can't do that. He has to let the police know. So you might as well just let the police know. And then, if you're not happy with how the police are reacting, then let Seth know. But don't go putting all over flipping Facebook. share with all of you what this woman has been putting out she's been um, active in the facebook groups um i don't know what to think about this but when it comes to this case with sebastian wayne drake rogers if you see something say something i know people um she's flat out made claims in groups i know two people that personally reached out to her on facebook messenger where she responded and said some things about sebastian being alive and sebastian rogers being seen do i believe it i don't know i don't know but it is there's a lot of buzz going on right now on the internet regarding this woman right here uh, i'll show you her profile i'll show you exactly what she said we're talking about sebastian rogers and apparently seth is aware of this situation so maybe seth can come forward and elaborate a little bit she claims that uh she's spoken to seth or, or people are saying in the chat 
after she posted that Seth and Tony are aware. Tony even uh, went out and said something. Um, I'll let you guys see. But is this, uh, you know, is is it, do we have a Sebastian sighting or do we have a woman that's just going to say anything or, or anything? You know, sometimes these people come out of the woodwork. So this is what it's about. This is what she said, folks. She posted this. And the person that she was uh, responding to here, uh, Melissa Winters responses. But, you know, we we reached, we re put this out on a thread. I can say 100% that Sebastian is alive and well. Trying to connect Seth. Does anyone know how to reach him? And then Melissa Winter says, and this is coming from Adana Sneed Fowler. And then uh, Melissa Winter's response, why you say that, please? And she says, I have new information regarding Sebastian, but I can't share it until I have spoken with Seth. I do not trust speaking with SCSO, TBI, and FBI. Okay, so here are the comments. Here are the comments. And first thing, a bunch of poop. You know, this person says, eh. But then you have, should give FBI this person's name. Donna Sneed Fowler, what is it? You know, use the tip line, FBI, TBI. And then someone else says, she looks local in Goodlitzville. And apparently she is from the uh, Goodlitzville area, which is right down the street from the Proudfoot home, by the way. Um, again, I don't know what to believe. I'm putting it out there because people are, 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 are circulating. I even posted, I sent her a message. I sent her a message and I did myself. I sent her a message. I said, hello, you claim Sebastian is alive. Where is he? But I didn't get a response from her. But I know two people that have gotten a response uh, from her. And she's saying that uh, the Proudfoots, she's scared that the Proudfoots will be moving Sebastian. She's claiming Sebastian is alive and Sebastian is in a house in the Tennessee area. Now, I think that's a big deal. I think that's a big, big deal, whether you think it's BS. Yeah, this, this is a big deal. And it has to be investigated, but... By putting it on Facebook, right, is not helping Sebastian. You know what I mean? It's not helping Sebastian. If he is alive and they have got him in a house somewhere or a building somewhere, right, and she's claiming to know where he is, they are now going to move him. Right? And another bit that gets me, and we'll fuck you leave it in a minute, and I'll stop it when we get there. Right? I'll stop it. Yes or not, it needs to be looked at. It needs to be looked at, just like any other thing regarding this case when it comes to, um, you know, that, that person that was found in North Carolina in the picture, uh, all these other, like, sightings out there need to be looked at when it comes to this case. This woman, and see, look, Melissa Winters, she responds and says, that woman in here all the time and does nothing but make hugging, caring emojis like 24-7. First, I thought she was a bot. I don't know what's going on, but I'm suspicious. It almost like she's a lurker ignited to come to life. Why now? And this is what this individual, Melissa, has said in reference to this post that she said. So she responds, Donna Sneed Fowler, Sebastian is 100% alive. Um, my sources have told me that this has been forwarded over to law enforcement. Um, I don't think anything has to go through Tony or Seth. It should go to law enforcement, um, but it, it can go to Tony and Seth. It could go to Chris and Katie. I wouldn't call TBI or Ellie if I were her either. Not no, I, if if I was someone in a, over there and I had information on a missing child, especially this child, I would not go to Sumner County. I would not go to TBI. But I will go to FBI before I went to anyone else. I'll go to FBI first, then TBI, and then Sumner County. And when I've gotten to Sumner County, I'll go, oh, and by the way, I've also let TBI and FBI know about this information. You know what I mean? I'd let them know that I've told them. But I think putting it on Facebook is not the way to go. Not sure if Seth is the person to contact either, since I believe he is still a suspect. And then people respond. Who would you call? I don't believe he is. I believe it's his dirtbag so-called mom. Okay, so uh, we are going to keep going on here. I would not contact Seth. People are saying, I would not contact Seth. I wouldn't contact Seth. 
fake profile account need to grow up, man. It's sad how some people play behind a computer screen and sad part about these kids. It's not a fake profile account, though. It I can't believe there's some people out there that believe Seth is involved in this. I I can't wrap my head around that. Seth is out at work. He's got proof he was at work. And like I've said before, if I was Seth, I would go to law enforcement and say, clear me or charge me. He knows where he was. Law enforcement knows where he was. But like I've said before, if they was to clear Seth, and not Katie or Chris, then the focus, everyone will go, oh, look, Seth has been cleared. Oh, but Katie hasn't. You know what I mean? So the focus would be even more on Katie. And I think the focus should be on Katie. She was the last one to see him. She was the last one to speak with him. It does go back to her, and she has responded on that account. Unless someone hacked into her account, or unless she's lying, I believe that this is uh, something that needs to definitely be looked at in reference to her. This is her profile. We'll go back to uh, what she, uh, her profile. Let me get her profile up here so I can show you a minute. Her profile here. Her name is Donna Sneed, uh, Donna Sneed Fowler. Let me get it here. Oh, by the way, they're actually saying re-elect Craddock. It's just weird stuff. And she's has made, she's actually posted things before in the Facebook groups, other Facebook Sebastian Rogers groups. Here she is again. Here she is again, April 10th. So this happened. She's posting April 10th. Sounds to me like the FBI are making their moves on Katie and Chris Proudfoot. I'm going to click on her profile so we can see what's up. This is the one. This is the one that claims that Sebastian is alive. We'll go to her profile, actual profile. Here we go. Here's her profile. So this is her, Donna Sneed Fowler. Uh, I think she's going to get a knock on her door uh, for sure. The, the authorities cannot overlook this um, on this matter. I mean, they're not going to be able to just ignore this. They're going to actually have to. And here's the problem is that people want to be funny and people want to be slick and people want to make BS claims or people are delusional. Um, rest assured, rest assured that people are going to be knock, knocking on her door. Uh, the least vet what she has to say. It looks like a legit profile and it looks like a legit person. That has been having a profile for years with numerous family members on her account. Now, I don't know who this woman is. I don't know why she's claiming Sebastian is inside a home somewhere in uh, Tennessee. And that, oh, she also makes claims. Let me let me go back to what um, I asked the two people I was corresponding with. I said, can I actually scare, share the screenshots? And they said, no. However, they said I could share the information. And what this woman is claiming, what this Donna woman is claiming is uh, that her cousin works for the Davidson County Sheriff's Office and knows Seth. Right. That's where I said this got me. Her cousin works for Davidson County Sheriff's Department. Right. And knows Seth. Huh. I wonder if she's been talking to her cousin. Like... Has Seth been said? Has Seth ever said anything to you about his son going missing? You know what I mean? I don't know. Ah, uh, that gets me. That bit. She claims she is not a troll, and she needs to talk to Seth about Sebastian's whereabouts. She doesn't trust SESO, TBI, or FBI, and feels they are covering up for the power proudfoots and the bower socks that's what she claims then she then she i think the sc what was he some county sheriff's office is doing a bit of a cover-up right i really do the fact that he used to he was always throwing the some of the county sheriff's offices, uh, their, their, their sheriffing to the conversation. Oh, well, just phone up and have such and such and such and such on the phone call with us. It was, and it always refers, says, well, we have to refer back to law enforcement. Why? Uh, why? Have it, it's like when Seth wanted to have 
that woman, the dog handler, go on his property with her dogs. And he said in that interview on Web Sleuths, I will do my checks first. And then when I've done my checks, I will get in touch with some of the county police off, uh, sheriff's office. And only then will I come back with a decision, yes or no. Why does he have to run everything past law enforcement? She claims that I know she claims Seth is desperate to find Sebastian. He needs to know his whereabouts before the Proudfoots and Bower Sox move him. That's what she said. She says the Bower Sox and the Proudfoots would move him. Now, I don't know whether to believe this or not. People are saying in the chat, this is really effed up. I highly doubt she's legitimate. If she knows where he can be found, it doesn't matter. If she trusts law enforcement, I know uh, it's not about her. Let TBI find her. She doesn't have to reach out to them. Well, guess what? The TBI are coming for her uh, because people in the chat are saying I contacted um, Eric Craddock. Eric Craddock, who is now the acting um, sheriff for Sumner County to inform this lady. Yep. And they should be knocking on her door. Because if this is just some woman trying to make a crank call, have her 15 minutes of fame, then that is sick. It's a bit like that guy who said he saw Sebastian getting into Kathy Barisok's car. Right? On a phone call. And he got traced, tracked down by Heather, the other PI. And he said, no, 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 it wasn't me. It's probably my grand my son or my grandson. And said, no, it was you. I've got your voice on the phone call. This is your voice. You know what I mean? He said, if you've got proof, if you've got video proof, then let me have it. He said, but I, it wasn't me. You know what I mean? So. That is just sick when people do that. I'm sorry, it's just sick. This is a 15-year-old boy. This is not a game. This is not a game to be messing about with and having police do this running about on false information. This is about a 15-year-old autistic lad who's missing. And one way or the other, he needs to be found. Now, if she's telling the truth, then... Good. I hope he is found. But if she's not, then she needs charges pressed up against it, pressed against her. Now this lady brought it on herself. She said it, she has to own up to it, whether it's legit or not. But you know, in this particular case, the way I'm hearing it with Remember, folks, with Sebastian, it's we still don't know what happened to Sebastian. So, you know, I assume that Sebastian isn't alive, but police say there's zero evidence of foul play. So could Sebastian be hidden somewhere alive? And if someone's coming out of the woodwork saying that Sebastian is alive in a location and is about to be moved to another location, you got to take it seriously. Regardless if it's, you know, you might think on the surface it's not because otherwise, you know, what do you do? Like with, with you know, you don't. But what about his medication? Is he, are they giving him medication or has he just gone cold turkey? And if he has, then I feel sorry because if Sebastian is alive and he's gone cold turkey off that medication, he's not sleeping. We know he's on medication for his sleeping, so he's probably not slept properly. He's not eating properly. His mind is racing and doing ten to, to ten to the dozen. Don't take people seriously. I mean, that's why law enforcement gets tips. They get tips. They get that information that comes through, and they vet through the information. And sometimes they have to go investigate those tips. She's from Tennessee. She's from Tennessee. Her name is Donna Sneed Fowler. She also posted in another group. She also posted in another uh, group centered around Sebastian Rogers. She says. Hi, I'm new to this group. I recently joined because I've been following Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers since he went missing. I pray, pray daily this precious young man is found. And this is her. It's coming from Donna Snee Fowler right there. Now, it's interesting. She just posted this July 28th. So she made a post in another Facebook group at the beginning of April, end of July, 
She's posting in this Sebastian Rogers update group, very small group. And now she's claiming that Sebastian is alive. What do you think? Do you believe her or not? Again, you don't have to believe me. I'm putting out the information that's out there because a lot of people are buzzing about this. And I think we're going to hear about this and we'll probably get Nick Barris or somebody that does a follow-up and finds out if this is legit or not, because you can't just go out there and say, it's like, you can't, it's the same thing as saying there's a fire in a building, right? Mm -hmm. You can't just say things anymore. Um, and if she's lying, if she's lying, she might be in some trouble. She might be in some trouble. People are having mixed opinions. They're saying it could be a troll, could not be a troll. People are saying this needs to go to law enforcement. Can we get a screenshot with the metadata to compare post dates if there are multiple claims by the same person and but why now? That's one of my questions for this woman. Why now? When did you find out about Sebastian being where he is? If he's alive, where is he? When did you find out about him being there? How long have you known about this? You know what I mean? And if you've known for how many months now? February to March, March to April, April to May, May to June, June to July, July. We're coming up to six months, we're nearly six months, a couple of weeks shy of six months. So why now? Is she not getting the attention that she thinks she should be getting? Because, sweetheart, if that's the case, you're going to be getting the attention you want. So I hope for your sake you're telling the truth. Keeps getting passed over, throws boiled no noodle on the cabinet to see it sticks. Uh, people are saying it's red flags. Uh, I have five friends in common with her, one sadly who has passed away. And then it says this, somebody commented and said that Tony Mathis has spoke with this woman. He says it's not Sebastian. This is somebody's comment. So Tony and Seth are aware of this claim. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I hope she's right. How can Tony say it's not Sebastian? Has he seen this lag thing? Has he actually seen this lag that this woman believes is Sebastian? Because unless you've seen this lag, you cannot say it's him or it's not him. You can't say that. Right. I hope Sebastian is found. I know someone else here said, I can say she is a real and legit person. She has just spoken to Tony and she has messaged uh, Seth. Seth will be contacting her. I will let her or Seth give the rest of the info when they feel comfortable to do so. So Seth and Tony know about this. What is everyone going to do about this, about this claim? What is everyone, for people that are just jumping in, again, woman is claiming Sebastian is live. What does that all mean? I don't know. And that's why I felt like I had to come on and, and, and share. There's nothing really else to this until we see what happens with uh, law enforcement and sees what they um, say or do about this. And could we see something in the next day? I don't know. It's always good to put out a miracle. I don't know. I don't know, folks. I tried to reach out to her. She doesn't respond. Maybe she doesn't like me. Maybe she sees the message. Maybe I'm in her spam or filters and she's just ignoring, but she apparently responded to other people. Remember this face. My you okay, JLR? I like you. And thousands of others like you. <laughs> Some don't. Some don't, but I do. Because he is boots on ground. He goes, I, I can't keep up with him. I really can't. He's here, there, and everywhere. I'll be seeing more about that, or we might be seeing Craddock uh, put information out. Speaking of Craddock, I just want to share this. Now, I don't know what's going to happen with this. While I'm here, I just want to show you that there is a new Facebook page with Craddock. Right. I'm going to leave it there. Right? That isn't a good view of him. <laughs> but let's just jump that screen. Right? So you take that with whatever. Is she telling the truth? Is she just doing it for a 15 minutes of fame? Because if this is just a 15 minutes fame thing, then that is out of order. This is a child's life we are talking about. It's not some... Oh, I'm going to tell him I know where he is and I'll have all this publicity and I'll have people talking about me. No, love. 
you're going to have the FBI or TBI kicking your flipping door in. Right? You cannot go round, if it is not true, you cannot go round saying things like this. So, I think it's just a matter of I don't know. I just can't understand why she's speaking out now. Right? She said she's followed this case from the beginning. So when did she find out about where Sebastian was? Right? Has she just, lo just recently found this out? Or did she know from the beginning? Or a month or so into the disappearance? When? When did she find out about Sebastian being in a so-called house? And he's scared that he'll be moved again. Right? So, no. I don't know what to make of that. I'd like to say I hope she's telling the truth. I'd like to say he's still alive. I've got to keep my hope up for Seth, if no one else. That is alive. Because there are cases. There are cases of children disappearing. For months and months. Years even. And then just turning up out of the blue. Sitting outside the shop. You know what I mean? So. It's possible. Now. I don't know if I've got that. Everyone in my downloads, I'm going to have a look. No, I haven't. Right, I've already played the other video of the um, silver on the scene. I replied some of that, but I'll put the link into that one because oh. That just gives me the creeps when I go through that house. Anyway, so, question. When has C, uh, the DA ever been involved in a missing child's case? I don't know that because this is a USA thing and I know they don't, the Crown Prosecution over here in the UK, they wouldn't get involved unless, uh, until the child is either found one way or the other. So... It's just a bit weird that the um, district attorney is involved. I don't get that. So, right. And the other thing was on the maps. I want to go to maps again, right? And I want to type in. All right, get rid of that. This was mentioned in another interview, but not by Chris. Well, it was it was referred to that Chris said this, right? And it's a place where apparently Sebastian used to like to go. Right. Now, I'm going to put in directions. Right. Okay. Where is magical place? And then go directions. Mom directions. Uh, from his house, okay? Because in this one, this one YouTube channel I've been what, listening to, 
it mentioned that they they gone to help in the search. And the first day they got there, there was a bit, like, they was late getting there. So the next day, her and her daughter got in the car and they met up at Rogers and they was giving, they had signed the information thing about contact information and all that lot. And she then phoned Chris up and said, look, we're out here searching. Is there anywhere we can search? And he mentions Mary's magical place. And he also said he can walk there. So I'm going to put it up on the maps on the screen so you can see for yourself. Right? Now, that's where mm, directions again, get directions up. All right, that's Mary's magical place there. All right, that's where. Oh, I'm going, I'm going. Oh, 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 go. Power off, power off. Ugh. Sorry about this, everyone. Ugh. Sorry about that. That was my stupid alarm, and my phone wouldn't let me swipe it off. Right? And... He said he can walk there. So that's where he lived. He lives. So he walked all the way down here. Right? Along here, down there, and round. Now, let's just go in a bit closer. Right? Um, is there a shortcut from here to over to there? Because there's no way would I walk all that if I knew I could get from here over to there, or even from here over to there. You know what I mean? But apparently he can walk there. Now this is Mary's magical. Place. Hmm, it's not gonna let me go. Okay, let's go up there. Why won't you let me go on there? Okay, it's not good. Let's see if I can get gang. Um, no. But apparently, it's a big play area. <coughs> <coughs> now, this was Imagery 2024. I think it's changed. I think the dates on this is all wrong. Right? Because I've seen pictures of this. Right? And it shows you there. Like, they've got a climbing frame and whatever. And I think that might have been the one, believe it or not. You know that video of Sebastian at a playground area? Right. Could that have been the one he was at? So, this is really old, this picture. Right. So, Veterans Park in line hockey, baseball, no. So, it's got to be Mary's magical place. It's got to be this area. Right here. Oh, is it this? Right. 
Is it this kind? Is it this? It's hard to say. It's hard to say from this one. Right? But if you look at that picture there, that's where Sebastian used to love to go. So you just look at that area around there. Right? And look what's there. Texas Roadhouse. And I know for a fact somewhere oh and this warrior's bike trail has that even been checked? You know what I mean? I should hope to think to God these areas will all have been checked. But where's the bowling houses and now? I know you got the Texas Road Jazz was there. So how do we know when they left Texas Road Jazz that they came straight home? Have you ever thought perhaps he wanted to go to there? And he's had an argument. His mum said no. But that is the park now. Here is there, right? That's what they built there now. But it's right next to the Texas Road, guys, which is really, really... Everything is really quite close to everything. I'm trying to find the bowling alley, which I know was around here somewhere. I don't know. Can't find it there. But that's very close to each other, isn't it? So if she was coming home from the Texas Road Games, she could come out of there. Yeah. This is how old the map is. Texas Road House isn't even built yet. What you say? Right, they have come out somehow onto this road here. Or this road. Right? And they have gone up there. Let's have a look again. Look at the route from... Uh, yeah, right. So it's on the route. Yeah. So Texas Road Guys is on that same road, the route, as literally. Uh, oh, God, this is fucking nice. You know what I mean? Straight rain. So, if they come out of Texas Road, guys, they could come up onto this road and go home the same route that they take. You know what I mean? But look all that open land there. I know there's a lot of houses and whatever, but still a lot of open land. Come on, come on. You know what I mean? Look, still so much open land, and yet this has all been searched. Right, up to this point here, and then along here. And home. 
It won't it's 15 minutes without traffic. It says here. So from Where is it? Come on. Come out again. From there by from this place, uh, Mary's magical place, home, is 15 minutes, 16 minutes, 15 minutes without traffic. Well, there's always going to be traffic, so say 16 to, say 20 minutes. So... They went, I'm just going through that transcript now of that interview. But it isn't an interview with Chris. It was an interview with someone else who was out there searching and spoke to Chris. And I believe she spoke to Seth as well. But I haven't got that far in the transcript yet. But that place was brought up. Mary's magical... Right, let's see if I can get it up. Let's see. Where is it again over here, isn't it? Where is it again? It's over here, isn't it? Oh. I'm super. So. There it is. Right, and that's what it looks like now. Now it's all finished. But it's right next to the Texas Roadhouse. And I believe this is a river. From what I can... Un I'm not sure if there was a river. I think it's a little river that runs down here. I'm not sure. I'd have to go back on some of the old searches that uh, Jay Allard done. Because he did all around there. He walked all around that area. Right. I'd have to go back on some of these and see if he even went to Mary's magical place. Because no one, up until that woman spoke about this on, on a live, on another YouTube channel, no one had ever heard about this Mary's Magical Place. Because Katie never said, oh, well, there is, there is a play area he loves to go to, it's called Mary's Magical Place. No, she's never said that. Right? Oh, he just loves to go, he likes going to the play, play areas. That's all she sort of said. So, I'd like to, there's so many questions I'd like to ask Katie, such as this Mary's magical place. And one question would be, do you honestly believe your son would run away from home? A planned run away without l taking any money or anything or shoes or coat. That's why I think if he did leave that house, if he did leave that house, and there is a possibility he could have missed all those cameras. There is a possibility he could have missed those cameras, right? He didn't leave on his own free will. Well, not not that he wanted to. He left because of something happening and he couldn't deal with it. And the only way to deal with it was to get away from the situation, take himself out of that situation. So I think because he had no shoes on, or did he? We don't know, because Kate is saying all his shoes are accounted for. Even Seth said, 
all his shoes are accounted for. Right? So, did you have a pair of shoes? An older pair that perhaps Katie hadn't quite yet got round to throwing away? Did you put them on? Right? So, I reckon, if anything, if he's walked out that house, he ran in fear of something. Something scared him to the point where he had to run out of that house. The front door is right next to where his bedroom is. Right? He ran out of that house if he le if he did go if he left on his on his own cordons, he ran. He didn't walk. He ran. But I don't know. It's those lights and that car in the area at around about, say, 3, 3 30 in the morning. That is bugging me. Right? Why was there a car there? Why was there these little spotlights, like little torches, bopping about at 3, 3 30 in the morning? Why? And then the same morning that Sebastian goes missing. Hmm? Bit, a bit suspicious, I think. And the fact that Eric Craddock, is he? Is it? Yeah. Who's now acting sheriff. Before he was only deputy, he's now acting sheriff. Um, what was it he said? He's not actually confirmed whether Sebastian had shoes on or not. He's not actually said, no, he hasn't. Or, yes, he has. He's not actually confirmed one way or the other. And what was he saying now? Oh, God. Um, God, my memory's just gone blank. Just gone blank. Anyway, so... That Mary's magical place was an area that Sebastian liked to go to, and apparently he could walk to it. Yeah, I'm wondering if you could get across that river to that park. You know what I mean? Is it a Deep river, fast running. It's definitely a river, a little stream of some sort. Because I know I wouldn't flip and walk all the way around that way if I could get across here somewhere, even if it meant my feet getting a bit wet. <laughs> Hmm. It doesn't look very deep, does it? But it's quite wide. His feet would definitely get wet if he tried to cut across there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sort of. So, yeah, his feet would definitely get wet. Unless there's a, a little narrower part, which is very shallow. But I still think his feet would get wet. But will guy walk all the way there? Right, knowing I could get, would well, I walk all the way down this road and along here, and along here to get to there? Well, I, I don't know. Hang on, let's see if I can get my little man on there. Oh, 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 oh. oh he's going to take me down to there. Right, okay. Now, bear in mind when you're looking at this, this is old now. This is before the park was built. 
because the park is over there somewhere. Over here. Because there's the baseball, is it? Baseball pitch, the ball pitch. So the play area is over there somewhere. I think if I go on a walk all the way right in there. I'd seriously be thinking of um, cutting through somehow. <laughs> yeah, the play area is... Right. Oh, come, on, come on. Because there's the ball pitches. Yeah, you've got three. You've got three. So the play area is definitely over this area, yeah. But you've never heard of that place until that woman spoke to Chris and he said, I'll try Mary's magical place. Why has Katie never mentioned that? Why is it like pulling teeth to get little bit of information about Sebastian out of these two people. I bet you said to Seth, where's Sebastian's favourite place when he came here? Seth will go, oh, blah, blah, here, there, you know what I mean? He'd tell you. With these two, with Chris and Katie, it's like pulling teeth. It's painful. It's stressful. I'm going to let you don't know if to believe them in the end. And that thing about how he won't talk about that thud. He just won't. So I'm wondering, was there a thud? Or was that thud something that impossible? Not saying it did. Possible could come to some other sort of a conclusion with Sebastian. It's hard to say. And why won't he talk about that thought? It wasn't there. So why can't he say, if he was at that caravan, his five wheeler, why can't he, why won't he just say, yeah, I heard Katie call through. I'm on the phone with Katie and Katie heard something and she shouted through, Sebastian, I don't know what you're doing in there, but you better get to sleep. Why doesn't he just say that? But he won't. He will not talk about that thud. And then when people say, oh, they have connections with the police. Yeah, they haven't. Well... Why does he keep throwing in Eric Craddock's name, Eric and whoever, their names, every time? You know what I mean? Why does he always have to pass everything through law enforcement just to have dogs come on his property? It's your property. You decide whether they come on or not. If they don't, they don't. Simple. You don't need to go through the police for that. You know what I mean? It's, it's something happened that Sunday night and Katie knows and Seth, uh, Chris knows. And the way he was pulling on making out that he was there for Seth, at the end of that interview, he's going, look, Seth, I'm here for you. Just stay, hang, hang in there, man. Hang in there. You know what I mean? Seth can't keep doing this. This is breaking Seth. I think he's gone past the part where he doesn't understand what's happening no more. I think he's gone past that part. He's now gone to the part where I'm angry now. I want the answers. I want the truth part. You know what I mean? 
because he's still hanging in for hope that his son is still alive. He's got that. He said that's the only thing that keeps me going is that my son. I believe that my son is still alive. If he for one minute thought his son was dead, it would kill him. It would kill him. So we've got to stay with the hope that Sebastian is alive. But it's just, I don't know, it's just the fact that, hold on, let's take that banger off because we're no longer showing that. Um, the fact that there's still so many questions. Still so many questions. And that woman, what's her name? Donna Sneed Fowler. If she is telling the truth, which I, I can only hope and pray, then fair enough. But there's no reason for her not to phone the FBI. The FBI aren't going to be in on some sort of cover-up. Neither... TBI... Mm, I won't say cover-up, because... Something I came to Sheriff's office. Do you remember when Seth got that information that he'd been asking for? And he got the information from the... Um, Charles... Child services, yeah, and he's talking to someone from TBI, and he told TBI, and TBI said, "Oh, can you send me a copy?" And Seth turned around and said, "You'd be better off getting a copy of Sumner County Sheriff's Office because they've got the unredacted." information. Sumner County Sheriff's Office hadn't even gave TBI that information. Why? Why didn't Sumner County give TBI that information from the child services? Because they didn't have it. They asked Seth for it and Seth said get in touch with Sumner County because they've got the unredacted paperwork. What I've got is all redacted, which is lots of blacked out areas and one or two words here and there. You know what I mean? But I wouldn't trust some account either. And now I'm like they're coming up to voting for a new sheriff, aren't they? Because the sheriff sadly passed away. So now Eric Craddock is going up for the post of sheriff, not deputy for the head he's going for the head job. And this is the time when some of the county police people want to say, you know what? You're doing a fucking shit show of a job on this Sebastian Rogers case. Why would we even consider Voting you in for sheriff. Who else is there? I'd be looking at who else could be sheriff. You know what I mean? But then again, I don't trust... I'm from the UK, so um, I can say this. I don't trust some of the county police, sheriff's office. I don't. I don't trust anyone in that office. I really don't. Someone is being paid. I seriously think that. Someone's being paid by either by Chris's mum or Chris's stepfather, but someone's being paid. And then you got Chris saying, well, all we keep asking is that you put flyers out. We put flyers out. Keep putting... People have been putting flyers out, Chris, but someone's going around after them and taking them down. So tell us who's taking these flipping flyers down. Tell us who's taking all these flipping flyers down. Because someone is. But you don't seem bothered by that, Chris. Or Katie. They just keep pushing the... Um, 
the line of just keep posting the flies, keep posting the flies, keep posting the flies. They can't keep posting the flies if your people, someone's going to keep taking them down. Someone does not want this lag found. Right? They don't want him found. It's not as if it's a town where they rely on tourists. Tourists. I could understand if it was a, a town that relied on tourists. They don't want... I can understand, say, someone going around taking flyers down then because people don't want to have flyers of a missing child floating around everywhere when people are around with their families. You know what I mean? Oh, my God, there's a child gone missing here. Oh, come on, we're not going to stay here. I think that's why Katie and Chris took the took their magnet things off their car because apparently the, a campsite, a caravan site, would not like anything like that. They wouldn't like any promotion of any child going missing, promoted being put out on their site because it wouldn't look, would look good on their site. But apparently they're not there now, so I don't know where they are. Don't know if they're back home. I know they had his daughter for the summer holidays. And he'll be giving her the daughter back because if he doesn't, he'll be on, he'll be watched. People are watching him to make sure that little girl goes back to her mama. Because this this time Nina won't be on her own. She'll have a whole load of people behind her if they try to pull any tricks of keeping that little girl. But that's why we haven't heard nothing of uh, Chris or Katie. And I think that was probably one of the um, things that was stipulated. Now, yes, he knew it was already been determined that he had a daughter during the summer holidays. But Nina had put a hold on it, had she not? So I think one of the stipulations might be you stay off YouTube. While you've got your daughter there, you do not go on YouTube. Stay off all your social network sites, off all YouTube, everywhere. Because we haven't heard of them. We've had sneaky photos put out where someone's called Katie out having something to eat with a little girl and a photo of Katie cuddling the little girl at church playing the good mommy while her own son is missing and she couldn't give two hoots. That's what gets everyone mad. Not the fact that they might believe that she's got something to do with it. It's the way she's behaving. Okay, everyone behaves, reacts differently. I understand that. But she's been playing happy families with his daughter the whole summer holidays. While her own son is missing. I couldn't have... If that had been me, I'd be going, you're joking. I can't have your... My son is missing. Do you not understand that my son is missing and you want me to look after your daughter while my son is missing while you're at work? Don't think so. You know what I mean? That's how I would be. But that is me. That's... I can't speak for Katie, but... And everyone thinks differently. And... I'm sure, like, you'll be saying they won't be able to do it either. Look after someone else's child while their own child is missing. No, they're cooking. So, anyway, I'm going to leave it at that because it's just gone two hours. And as I said, I am tired. But, let me know. Do you think this is a criminal investigation? Because it was slipped up in a conversation. 
on a phone call or whatever, an email was sent to her saying her request for the certain information has been declined or whatever due to it being a criminal investigation. And then literally the same day or the next day, they backtracked and said, no, no, that was a typing error. It's not a criminal investigation, right? But then you got at that meeting where Seth and Katie went to and they showed him that clip of Sebastian coming out of Texas Roadhouse with his mom. In that room was TBI, Sumner County Police, Sheriff, TBI and the District Attorney. Now why is a District Attorney on the case of a missing child? So let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think it's criminal or not? And what do you think Katie would know that she isn't telling? And that's another thing. That's why Chris won't, isn't letting her do any interviews. He's not protecting her. He's protecting himself because he knows she can slip up. She will slip up. And people will pick out these little bits as she's talking. Did she just say that? Oh. Wow. Sort of thing. I won't believe what she just said. But she will slip up. She's done it like time in the Chronicles of Olivia. Of Olivia. I was going around, driving around the school. But by the time I got there, he was... And as she said it, she did the hand signal across the neck and said he was, and then stopped. He was what? Pfft. He was, and she did the hand signal across the neck. So, she slipped up there. There's other times she slipped up as well. Like when she was talking. Was it in the Chronicles of Olivia or was it? Yeah, I think it was. And she, yeah, it was before she did the hand signal. And she was talking about that, that the morning. All in all, that Sebastian went missing. And then all of a sudden, Chris goes, <coughs> and it's like, and, and, and Chris did the, uh, uh, what, and she's using her fingers on the table. Three way call. She had to, Get back on track. Because she was wandering off. She was... By doing that cough, it's like getting her back on track. So, let me know in the comments. Leave me a comment. I do read your comments. Please let me know. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel. If you have subscribed, please check because YouTube are going around take and unsubscribing people. Not just on my channel, on some big channels as well I've been doing it. I've been watching some big channels and I've heard them all saying, please check that if you were subscribed, please check you're still subscribed because they're going around unsubscribing you. Right? But that's YouTube. So please check, if you are subscribed, please check you still are. If you're not subscribed, please consider doing so. Please, please, please give this video a like, share it, and leave me a comment. I do look forward to reading these comments. So until then, I will see you when I'm back on tomorrow afternoon, well, evening, early evening, about six, but I'm talking about something that's been going on in the UK. So that one will be a bit more, I have to watch what I say in that one because they're uh, coming out with these laws now where if we say this, we can get arrested. If we say that, we can do it. If we share certain videos, we can get arrested. If we swear in public, we can get a hundred pound fine. So I'm learning to swear in French, Spanish, German, Jap Japanese, Chinese, and any other language I can think of. 
but that's for tomorrow. So if you're interested in what's going on in the UK, please come along and watch me. I'll be on at 6 o'clock tomorrow because there's always new stuff coming out. Until then, I'll see you then. Good night.